Hi there, I'm Lindsay Sparks, author of books that include hidden worlds and twisted myths. Welcome to my weekly author's notes podcast. Today is Sunday, um, May 29th, and I would love to share some of my reflections from this past week this past week with you. Um, first of all, uh, if you're a regular listener or viewer, you probably noticed that I did not record last week. Um, I was down with the flu, which was super fun. Um, my whole family had it, including my three-year-old and my one-year-old, um, and my husband. And, uh, yeah, so my voice, I, I've had like lingering cough and my voice has been pretty rough and I'm sure you can hear it now. Uh, so uh, I hope it's not too rough to listen to. Um, but I did want to update you guys on what's been going on. So I have been, uh, I did take a few days off to rest, um, <laughs> when I had like a fever, uh, but I am have been working since then. Uh, so, um, still the usual freebies echo in time. And after the ending our free, uh, ebook from all the retailers. And then for subscribers to my newsletter, you have access to my starter library, which includes echo in time ink, which after the ending, um, and legacy of the lost, and then, um, several of those books in audiobook as well. Um, and if you are not a subscriber, the link is in the show notes. Um, my current work in progress, I have some updates here. So it's been two weeks since I last updated everyone. So yeah, I definitely have some updates. Um, I have, uh, so Blood of the Broken is 100% with beta readers. Um, I am, it's actually back. I actually have all of the feedback from all four of my beta readers for this round. And, um, I'm really happy with the response. Um, I haven't gone through like the nitty gritty, um, comments within the manuscript from all of my beta readers. Um, but I'm really happy with the response that I received. Like overall, everybody really loved it. Um, or was really impacted by it. It's a big emotional roller coaster. Um, I'm just extremely pleased with the response. So there's definitely some things that I need to tighten up or expand on in the manuscript, but overall the story, the plot, that stuff, um, is staying as is. So it shouldn't be too difficult of a round of beta revisions. Um, so I'm really happy about that. Um, especially because I'm going to have to eat away at some of my beta revising time at the beginning of this week to finish up on some of, uh, what I'm going to talk about next, which is, uh, I am launching, I can't, I can't remember. I feel like I was going to talk about it last week, but since I didn't record, since my voice was basically non-functional, um, I did not, I don't think I've told you guys about this. Um, I know I've talked about it on Facebook a little bit, um, and on TikTok, but I don't think I've mentioned on here. So I am launching a new Patreon. Um, I did previously have a Patreon, which I shut down last fall because it just, I wasn't really happy with the way that it was working out. Like I didn't feel like I was offering enough value to my subscribers. So this is something totally different. Um, it's called Sparks Plus Spice. Um, and it's basically, <laughs> The way that I'm thinking of it as, and the way that I've kind of described it as, is like me writing spicy fan fiction from my own stories. Um, so I, I get that it's not fan fiction because it's my own stories, um, but that's basically what it is. So um, I am right, uh, so this is a Patreon where I can post um, extended scenes and bonus chapters and bonus short stories and all kinds of stuff um, from my existing books and worlds. Um, that are all romantically based, um, a little bit extra spice and sizzle than what you would normally get in my published books. Um, so I am writing extended scenes from basically any book that I have previously published is open for an extended, potential extended scenes. Um, and any book that I have previously published is also open for bonus chapters, um, all spicy related uh, content and everything that is published within the Sparks and Spice Patreon um, platform will be uh, probably more explicit than what is in the books. Um, I think the thing that prompted this, uh, I will mention there's one more thing that's included in the Patreon, um, but the thing that originally prompted this was when I was writing Blood of the Broken. Um, I think that I, uh, I, I in terms of my like author and creative evolution, I have just become a little bit grittier, more drawn to like the darker, like more mature content. I like, I don't know how to say this, um, <laughs> um, without sounding like my brain is just like totally in the gutter, but, um, I don't want to 
I don't like feeling like I have to hold anything back. Um, however, in the Legacies of Olympus world that I've set up, which includes Atlantis Legacy and All World Online, um, uh, in the four current, I guess four and a half if you count Sacrifice of the Sinners, books that are currently published, so All World Online, Pride and Prejudice, as well as the four Atlantis Legacy books, starting with Legacy of the Lost, they're all very um, mild in terms of the adult content, um, especially like sexual adult content. Um, and I did that on purpose. I wanted there to be something within my catalog that was accessible to a wider range, um, because the books in the echo world tend to be a little bit racier, a little bit more explicit, especially Song of Scarabs and Fallen Stars, notably darker, grittier, and spicier. Um, but the Atlantis Legacy and All World Online, they do have romance, um, but they're a little more fade to black. Um, not quite so open door and not quite so explicit or detailed um, when we do get into those scenes. So in Blood of the Broken, we see the culmination of a relationship that we have been waiting for for the entire series. Um, and I, I personally wanted to write it more graphic and detailed than I have previously set up the expectation for in the series. And I didn't want to um, offend, upset, or turn off my current readers or to, for people to feel like I had, um, I feel like there are promises that we make to readers when we write a series, that there are things that they can expect when they, when a new book comes out. And I didn't want to break those promises, um, by putting in more than readers were expecting to get from this series. So, um, but I did want to write those scenes in the way that I was feeling inspired to write them. So I came up with this idea for Sparks Plus Spice, um, this Patreon. So if people do want that extra content, um, initially from this book, um, there are several extended scenes that are going to be available through Sparks Plus Spice for Blood of the Broken specifically. There's also going to be a bonus chapter. Um, but then I was like, well, there's tons of other stuff that I have, you know, faded to black because it didn't necessarily, I try to make it so that any of my spicy scenes, even in the echo world, um, that are included, that they relate to the either character development or the plot of the story. And, and somehow they move, they move it forward, either the character development or the plot of the story. And so there are scenes that I have closed the door or faded to black because I didn't feel like they necessarily pushed the story forward or pushed the character development forward. Um, and one example is in Song of Scarabs and Fallen Stars, chapter 30. There is a the beginning of a romantic scene with Kat and Nick. But I didn't want to put that in the book itself because... It didn't move the story forward. This isn't technically their story. They're not the central figures in this story. They're kind of here as a secondary perspective to shed some light on what's actually going on related to Tarset and Atum's journey in the past. So, but it was a scene that I have had readers ask for more from. So I wrote the extended scene for that finishing out their love scene. Um, and there's a, just a bunch of other scenes from previous books that have been faded to black or shut the door again, because they didn't move anything forward within the story or for the characters that I can finish essentially. And, um, there's other things that have been referenced that I could write bonus scenes for, um, that, that didn't fulfill those necessary requirements of moving anything forward, but still are fun for, you know, the, the people who really genuinely love these characters and these series. Um, so that's what this is for. Uh, and I'm really excited about it. Um, it kind of gives me a way to keep the books that are published on all the normal platforms like Amazon and Barnes and Noble and that kind of thing. Um, in the audiobooks, it keeps them, a little more accessible um, and uh, for specifically for the extended scenes that like um, one of the extended scenes from Blood of the Broken 
is not going to only be for subscribers. So it will be on the Sparks and Spice Patreon, but it will be available to anybody who wants to read it. Like you don't have to pay for it. Um, so some of those scenes that that could like border the line of could be could have been included, but I didn't include because I didn't want to offend some readers. Um, some of those things will be available for essentially free, but then there will be others, especially things that are more explicit, like this cat and Nick scene. That's going to be behind the paywall to protect people, <laughs> um, especially minors. Um, so that's kind of my strategy there. Um, there is also going to be, when I launch, there's going to be a, um, did I already say this? Um, there's going to be an, a bonus scene from Echo in Time. Um, it's a bonus epilogue, basically an entire chapter. Um, Echo in Time ends with like a sort of, they're happy for now. Um, they have like me, like defeated the enemy ish. Um, but there's like the sense that something more is coming, which it is, uh, because it's only the first book in a trilogy. Um, but, uh, the, there's a chance there's a, they're at a feast with the other, um, Nezirets, uh, Lex and Haru or Lex and Marcus are at the feast with the other Nezirets. And, um, I had this idea when I was reading it for read by the author, we just finished that one two weeks ago. Um, finishing that book for that show. Um, and I was like, it would be really nice to see like how, what the kind of reunion scene looked like because Lex, Lex woke up from getting shot. Um, spoiler, um, Lex woke up from her injury at the end of Echo in Time and her first moment reuniting with Marcus is in front of this big crowd of strangers. And I was like thinking that it would be nice to see what their reunion looked like later, their private reunion. So, um, this is, so that's going to be, a, a I, I feel like it'll be like a really beautiful scene, um, that I'm going to be, that's the only one I haven't written yet for the initial launch, which is going to be on Wednesday, um, a couple days after this airs. Um, and then the other thing that is going to be a part of this Patreon is an exclusive serial. It is a, um, reverse harem paranormal romance, um, it is mostly just fun, but it does, of course, it has some like mythological elements. I can't help but include that kind of stuff. There's a mystery. Um, it is starting to get a little more serious, <laughs> a little darker, a little more serious, um, a little grittier than I had initially thought it was going to be. So apparently I can't help but put those complicated elements in there uh, into any story that I write. But um, it's called The Last Vampire Queen um, and season, the first season, so it's a serial, episodic serial. So for the first two episodes of season one are going to be available on Wednesday, June 1st, when the Patreon launches. Um, and episode one will be free and available to the public. Uh, and then episode two, which is a little more explicit, is going to be hidden behind the paywall. Um, both because like, I just can't produce tons of content for free without getting paid for it because this is my job. Um, but at least if you're unsure if this is something that's for you, you can read episode one, see if you like where the story is going, um, and decide if you want to subscribe. Um, it's, uh, there's going to be two tiers. Um, one is just going to be a couple bucks and the other one is going to be about five bucks. The higher tier, um, <laughs> the higher tier is going to have some uncensored stuff. So like for the cat and Nick story, <laughs> um, I got a little carried away. I shared it with Mandy, my assistant, and uh, she, I was, I was concerned that I got a little carried away and went a little bit too far. And she confirmed that she felt like for an initial offering, this was like a, maybe a little bit too extreme. So we talked about it and we decided that what would be best would be to do a slightly toned down version, um, for, for available for all, for all of the subscribers to the Patreon. And then I'm going to do the uncensored version for the higher tier. If like, you really want to go there. <laughs> so Nick has extreme tastes. Um, and I don't feel like this is like, this is not even remotely close to the extent of his extreme tastes, but I still think like for initially dipping our toes into the, like the spicier side of Lindsay Sparks stories, um, it did, I did get a little bit carried away. <laughs> so, um, yeah. <laughs> um, and then the other thing that the higher tier will be able to do is, uh, the, the five buck tier, five bucks, um, is, uh, vote on what, uh. If, if I'm ever undecided about scenes 
that I want to write or um, bonus stories or anything like that or characters that they want featured, that higher tier will get to vote on that. Um, and then it's just a monthly subscription. So, um, And I got this idea from uh, several artists who I follow on... Oh, my phone is telling me there's an Amber Alert. Hmm. Um, my... Some artists I follow on Instagram, they do uh, Not Safe for Work Patreons um, for fan art um, from, like, a lot of, like, Sarah J. Mass and um, Jennifer L. Armentrout, like, that kind of stuff. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. It just seemed like a really good idea, especially because I always feel like I have to use a lot of restraint with writing those spicier scenes, um, but this way it's kind of like a way to just, like, let go of those reins and let the creativity flow the way it wants to let my muse tell the stories that she wants to tell um in a way that doesn't feel uncomfortable to me like this feels more comfortable and people know exactly what they're getting when they subscribe to this like you're getting the spicier stuff so yeah um right now i am reading sorry that was like really long <laughs> i am reading flirting with the monsters the series by eva chase um this is part of my uh, research for the reverse harem paranormal serial. Um, and I have a whole list of other reverse harem paranormal books that I'm going to be reading. Um, it is very much its own thing, reverse harem, like the whole, like multiple love interests for the one woman. Um, and there's just like, <laughs> beyond the fact that there's like mechanics that I need to figure out for how this works. Um, <laughs> There's the element of, like, I really want to make sure that I make each of the members of this kind of, like, group love situation um, really distinct and interesting and that everybody is bringing something to the relationship. Um, so, uh, and I, I mean, yeah. I really love um, where this story, The Last Vampire Queen, has gone um, and I'll talk about that a little bit later when I get to my Google stuff. Um, but it just, it's, it's allowing me to explore beyond the spicy stuff. It's allowing me to explore some, um, elements that I've really been wanting to put into a story, but that don't fit into either the Echo World or the Legacies of Olympus. And both of those universes are so complex and expansive that they're kind of big enough for me to continue to write in for the rest of my life. Like I don't need to venture out beyond them and then also including the ending world that I write with Lindsay Pogue um I kind of have all of my <laughs> I have a very broad fictional like playground to play in but there are certain things that I've been wanting to explore in my stories like I really want to have to have a story that has like a haunted gothic house and so that's something that I'm going to get to include in here I've always wanted to write a vampire story um and so this series or serial, The Last Vampire Queen, obviously vampire, um, but there's also going to be some of the other standard um, mythical or supernatural creatures like shifters, and um, this is where I'm going to fit in my mermaid story idea, um, So, because the mermaids are going to fit under the shifter family. And then there's um, elementals, is what they're called in this world, but they're witches, basically, um, and then there's demons. So it's kind of like the four main original classic, um, supernatural creatures. So I'm really excited about writing something that kind of goes back to my urban fantasy roots. Um, but that can like straddle the line into this or make the leap into this kind of like reverse harem spicier world. So it's going to be really fun. I'm really excited about it. I feel like in this serial, people are going to get all the stuff that they love from a Lindsay Sparks series, all of the mythology and history and mystery and like the complex characters, but they're just going to get like the romance element is going to just be pushed like all the way, all the way to the extreme. <laughs> 10 out of 10 on romance. Um, so yeah, I guess on spice. Um, but I have with the way that the story is structured, the spicy element is integral to the plot. So like her power is fueled by um, her physical relationships with people. Um, so it is essential to the story. So it's not just like this extraneous thing that's thrown in. So I'm really excited about exploring the way that that would impact relationships, the emotional side of relationships, having this necessary physical element 
um, that has to be met by multiple people, um, how that the kind of push and pull strains and conflicts that that's going to cause on the emotional side of these relationships. So I think it's going to be really interesting. Um, and I'm going to explore some stuff about motherhood. And I mean, it's, it's, it's not going to be like one dimensional or shallow at all. Um, so yeah, it's, it's gotten a lot deeper and more complex than I expected it to, but I'm really excited about it. Um, okay. So like I said, I'm reading flirting, the flirting with the monster series. Um, I just read blood ties by Tara Benner, my dear author friend for she's, um, we're doing like a season 1.5 of the read by the author show and podcast. Um, and she is reading her, um, the prequel novella for her, which is of mountain shadow series. It's a contemporary fantasy series. Um, blood ties is the name of the prequel. She is for the next four episodes, of read by the author she is reading that and so i just uh recorded the interview with her talking about that story it's a really fun story um it's very like it reminded me a lot of supernatural the show um and there's two brothers and uh yeah it's great you guys are gonna love it if you listen to that show um and then i am also reading the shining girls by lauren bukes um and <laughs> at the same time as watching the shining girls the show on apple tv um, LP and I are discussing The Shining Girls, the book, and then the adaptation to the show on uh, the No Shelf Control uh, podcast the next episode. Um, so I'm really enjoying both the book and um, the show. My husband is a little iffy on the show. I think uh, it is interesting, something that we will talk about, I'm sure, the different way the chronology is explored. It's a tad bit confusing. Um, uh, but the book and the show uh, approach that chronology differently, the timeline. Okay, uh, we did finish. So what what else am I watching? Uh, we did finish Snowfall season five. And so now we're, that's all that's out so far. We're waiting for season six. And I am still watching The Witcher season two. I just have not had any free time. My, um, I mean, other than when I was sitting, I just played vi video games nonstop when I was six. So <clears throat> <clears throat> um, and I have been playing Elder Scrolls Online. Um, I played Elder Scrolls Online for like tw 12 hours one day last weekend when I could not function as a mother um, because of the flu. So thankfully my husband wasn't sick yet at that point, so he just took care of the kids the whole day, and I just was a like couch zombie playing video games, and um, <laughs> it was like both wonderful and terrible. <laughs> um, okay, so my high... Over these last two weeks, um, I feel like I had a bunch of things, um, I, but I'm just going to talk about the most recent ones. So um, I had a great interview with Tara for the Read by the Author podcast and show. So that's going to be coming out on Wednesday. Um, and then I just this morning received the first sketches, um, pose options for uh, the dust jacket of Echo in Time for the Echo Trilogy 10th Anniversary Special Edition. So I am doing all three books, um, Echo in Time, Time Anomaly, and Ricochet Through Time. Um, but I just received from Sonia. Um, Sonia Matas uh, is the, lead, I guess, lead um, artist. It's actually a duo. Um, but uh, she sent me the initial pose um, options or, or ideas that she had, and they are these sketches are stunning. They are just absolutely stunning. She is amazing. Um, and I am blown away by them. I love them all. There's three. Um, there's two that she prefers and I am happy with any of them. So I'm happy to go with the two that she, either of the two that she prefers. I am thinking that at this point, I'm probably going to ask her to for both of them and one of them is going to be the dust jacket and one will just be more of a line illustration that I can put inside the book um they're just beautiful it's Haru uh Marcus and Lex and they're if, if you when you guys see them you're going to be blown away they're stunning um I can only imagine how beautiful they're going to be when they're in full color her color and light is just the thing that initially drew me to her well and also her figures are they're just immaculate her, the faces, the expressions that she is just a true master of her art. And I am so excited and honored to, to have her working on this project. I think these, be, these books are going to be stunning. Um, 
And then an another high is that um, Mandy and I have been working on the graphics for the Sparks Plus Spice Patreon, um, and she did the banner for the Patreon page, and I <laughs> bro broke out the old Photoshop, dusted it off, and I got, just got inspired. I had a vision of how I wanted to the co do the cover, how I wanted the cover for the cereal to look, and it's very simple, so it was something I felt like I could like possibly tackle. Um, so I did it. I made the cover for The Last Vampire Queen season one. Um, it's available in the cover is on display in um, my reading group, Facebook reader group, Lindsay's Lovely Readers. Um, and uh, I think it turned out really great. I'm really happy with it. Um, and then Mandy has been working on the symbol for the kind of like immortal world within the Last Vampire Queen, which is uh, based around three, three to four ish. There's three main houses, and then they're fighting against the demon house, which I can't remember what I called. I want to say like I called it the House of Darkness or House of Shadows or something like that. Um, but so the three main houses are the House of, um, <clears throat> the House of the Sun, the House of the Moon, and then the House of the Dawn, the House of the Dawn. Um, the House of the Sun represents the immortal creatures. I know this isn't going to make complete sense like you'd think it would be the moon. Um, but the House of the Sun is where the shifters, that's their um, group. Uh, cre they were created by Helios. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, to help fight in this immortal war against the demons. Um, and then the House of the Moon is created by Selene. Uh, and that's for the vampires. Um, and they were, so there's like these three immortal races that were created by the siblings, Helios, uh, Selene, and Eos, um, who created the elementals under the house of the dawn. Uh, and they are, were created millennia ago to fight against the demons. Um, that war is over. Uh, and uh, now this is, we're experiencing what the world has become our modern world, this is like this hidden part of it, um, what they're kind of up to right now. So um, there is now internal fighting since they don't have this external enemy um, or currently they don't have this external enemy, the demons. So now there has become internal fighting and it's kind of breaking down um, with the two main oppositions being the house of the sun and the house of the moon. So the shifters and the vampires, which is kind of fun because now I get to do my own play on the kind of like classic vamps versus werewolves thing. So I'm pretty excited about where that is going. And also just, I have set up a mythology for it. Um, the whole like shifters being cursed by the moon or werewolves being cursed by the moon was something that came from the vampires, the house of the, the house of the moon cursed them, which is where their, their tide of the moon and shifting comes from. So it's very interesting. Um, the way that the mythology has, has formed. So like, like so many things that I write, I feel like it has formed itself <laughs> that I did not form it. Like my muse has fed it to me. So, um, I'm really ex excited to pl explore this world with the story and to share it with everybody. Um, yeah. So, oh, anyway, but the symbol that I was talking about, it is beautiful. Um, but it is a, uh, it's a very like mystical astrological looking thing. Um, but it's got like a sun and then a crescent moon and a rose to represent the three houses because those are the symbols for those three gods. So the sun for Helios, the moon for Selene, and then the rose for Eos. Um, and uh, then there's like some astrological stuff around it. Um, so yeah, I think it's really cool, really cool symbol. And I'll share that in the group, the Facebook group soon too. I need to figure out how to fit it onto the cover somehow. Um, the low this week was that I had the flu. Um, but I am definitely in recovery, even though my voice is still a little rough. Uh, so yeah, I'm sure next week I'll be all better, you know, knock on wood. Um, and last, last week's obsession was, um, developing the world and writing for the last vampire queen and writing those first two episodes. Um, yeah, each episode is about three of my usual chapters long, I would say in terms of what to expect. And there will be one episode every month, except there's two episodes in this initial month. Um, okay, so I went back through my Google search history and I just pulled some of the more interesting stuff because two weeks had a lot. And it was actually three weeks worth of Google search history because I think I forgot to do it two weeks ago, last time I recorded. So 
Um, I'm going to try to get through this really quickly because I realize that this episode is going insanely long. <laughs> um, okay, so um, the first one is like all the things that I searched for synonyms for, um, which was a lot. So I, this is going in reverse timeline. So it starts with stuff that I searched for The Last Vampire Queen and then is going to go backwards into the end of Blood of the Broken. So I searched for synonym for hypnotize, spell, haze, daze, pain, nice, pleasure. <laughs> this is hilarious. Um, engorged, swollen, lustful, comforting, guarded, reluctant. And now we're getting into Blood of the Broken synonym searches that I did. Link, nexus, torrent, faith, doomed, strain, push, vine, thread, energy, lightning, and bolts. So yeah, when you read the stories, you can probably see. I mean, it's not really hard to imagine what parts of The Last Vampire Queen have to do with engorged, swollen, and lustful. Mm. <laughs> anyway, so um, when I was doing my research for The Last Vampire Queen, I also searched for ancient Greek surnames Moon. And this is kind of like when I was originally setting up the mythology and structure of this world. Um, I knew I wanted there to be a tie to the moon, and um, that was kind of how I came up with um, Celine and all that stuff. Or And that uh, another search that had to do that was Vampire Moon Goddess. So I wanted to find out what kind of connection there was between vampires and the moon, if there was anything. This is how a lot of my initial search starts. I'm just like tossing ideas up onto the internet and seeing what the internet tells me. Uh, exists out there, and then I follow those trails further. So that was how I came up with Celine. Um, the ancient Greek goddess, and then from Selene, I found her siblings Helios and Eos, and created the connection to the other immortal races, um, and the houses and all of that fun stuff. So, um, I think uh, let's see here. So for my big goal this week, uh, I my big goal is to launch Sparks and Spice, uh, the Patreon on June first, Wednesday. Um, and also to launch the first episode of season 1.5 of, uh, read by the author with Tara's story, uh, Blood Ties. So those are my two things, both launching on Wednesday. And, uh, I think they're both going to be great. Uh, and then I am looking forward to this week after the launch of the Patreon. Um, so probably starting on Wednesday, I will be going through the beta feedback for Blood of the Broken and making those revisions. Um, so I think that is, uh, it's going to be a really fun week, and I'm looking forward to it, um, and especially just looking forward to feeling better. So um, that's it for me this week, uh, and uh, I hope you have a wonderful week, and happy reading! <laughs>